Hey everyone, this is Kelsey from the Arcane Library. So today I'm actually gonna walk you through my updated minimalist Dungeon Masters kit. So I've actually made a video about this before, but it was several years ago at this point, back when I had just a really grainy camera and a terrible microphone. So um, my equipment has been upgraded, not only on here, but in my DMs kit as well. So in the intervening years, I've had a couple of little changes that I wanted to share with you all in case you were perhaps looking to put together a kit such as this yourself. So let's jump in. So this, first of all, is the bag. This is just a yellow version of the bag that I had in my last video. Um, but it all fits inside here, which is, you know, altogether not super big. So this thing is perfect for um, really any kind of thing, like con games, when I run games at my local gaming store, um, and even home games. I really don't need much more than what's in here hardly ever. So let's walk through what's inside. Prepare to be surprised, but I'm gonna start with a non-exciting thing, which is a microfiber cloth. So you'll see why this is important, but um, for certain map things, you're gonna need to be uh, erasing and keeping your map clean, depending on what the characters are doing. So it's always really handy to have one of those. So the next thing in here, now this is an upgrade since last time, I have an egg timer. So this thing is super handy for keeping uh, players moving. So um, in a game that I run a lot of and that I'm currently writing in Shadow Dark, real time comes into play quite a bit in the game. But even if you're running a game like 5th edition D&D, you can get your characters moving by saying, hey, I'm putting five minutes on the clock. This entire building is gonna burn down in five actual minutes. And then just go through initiative as fast as you can. And it creates a lot of really fun tension. So this I use every single game. All right, the next thing here, I have a little bag of index cards. Um, these are incredibly handy for making name tags, for you know writing out quick treasure or you know a new spell, really anything that you just want to create on the fly and hand to a player or set up. I even use them to make little miniatures on the fly when I didn't have something quite right. You know, I would draw a little like minotaur or something on the three by five card and bend it in half and just use it on the. Um, you know, the map or whatever we were using. So super, super handy. You should always have a few of those available. And then of course, the chaos cubes, the dice. I only have three sets of dice still. Now, I actually own about six sets of dice now. Like, you know, I'm going crazy with it, but I really only own dice that I use. And I prefer just these like plastic, easy to read dice where if it goes flying off the table at a convention and gets lost, I'm not gonna be like heartbroken, it's replaceable. But so I, I actually have just three full sets of ordinary seven dice. And then in my main kit, I also keep these two yellow spin down dice. These are really handy for counting timers because um, they start at 10 and then they, they spin down directly to nine, eight, seven. Um, and these cover pretty much any kind of round-based countdown timer that I've needed to use where we're measuring um, not real time, but game time. So super handy to have two. Two's been perfect too. I've never needed more than two. So that's all I need for me. Um, so those are the dice. Now, in my last video, I had some other specialty dice, which I do sometimes still use, but these days not as often. So like, for example, I had a D6 weather die where you would roll it and it had like a little picture of a certain type of weather. Um, I still do use it sometimes, but these days I actually just will roll an ordinary d20 or a die um, that is gonna give me a result where higher is more agreeable or better for the season. Um, that's been the mentality I've kind of been adopting where higher is better, so if I have to ask the dice a question, um, the higher the roll, the better the outcome, or even just a flat yes or no, you could use you know, on a D6, one through three is no, and four through six is yes. So that's a really simple way to generate all kinds of things that you have questions about in your game world. All right, then, oh, look at this. This is some uh, Pogs. Who remembers Pogs? Did you grow up in the 90s like me? Um, so these were like milk caps that are shiny and have really cool, extraordinarily 90s art on them, which, to me is very nostalgic because I played a lot of D&D in the 90s. So I went on eBay and bought a huge stack of vintage pogs for a song and I give them out to new players in my games as their like luck tokens or their inspiration tokens if you're talking 5e. Um, and I think people really get a kick out of getting one and I let people keep them because I have dozens. 
And I think people kind of enjoy getting to pick out their pog that speaks to them and then use that as their token in game. So that's been a fun thing. All right, next thing in here now, lots of clear bases of numerous sizes and shapes. I just carry a ton of these with me because you never quite know how many creatures you're gonna need. But that leads me into my next bit here, which is the minis that I use. I use flat plastic minis by a company called Arc Knight. Um, and they're truly spectacular. To this day, they're my favorite piece of my kit. I wanna show you guys how these work. So they, they come with this acrylic base and then it has a back and a front side of art. Um, and this is like a clear standee and then you just fit it into its base and you can walk it around however you need. They're, they're sized um, equivalent to like other miniatures of standard size. So I have just tons of these and what I'll do is if I, I know my players are going into like a specific dungeon or area, I'll just put together a bunch ahead of time um, just to have them kind of ready to go. And I mean, in what other world could you fit literally 25 miniatures inside a tiny plastic bag that are already ready to go? It's spectacular. I will continue to buy more and more of these as many as I possibly can. It's always good to have duplicates. Um, yeah, flat plastic minis. And I, I run a lot of open table style games, so I have pre-made characters that I hand out and I picked out some minis that match with those pre-made characters so people can just jump right in. So I wanna actually show you guys where I keep my flat plastic minis because this has changed since my last video. So now I have this folder with obviously some cool stickers on it. Um, but this is an American card sized folio, I, I believe by Ultra Pro. Oh, I have to look that up. I'll put a link below in the description. But um, these are these are basically just a, a magnified version of what I had showed in the last video of uh, business card holders. So um, you can literally just fit the minis in here page by page. Um, flip through them. You can see some are missing because I've been taking them out to set up encounters. Uh, I absolutely love this. This is, I, I could probably hold, I think it holds like 300 to 500 minis in here. And I just sort them by what makes sense to me. You know, like if I'm looking for aberrations, I know that those are gonna be towards the front. If I'm looking for dragons or big things, I put those towards the middle. So that's my trick for these. Absolutely the favorite part of my kit, I would say. All right, pencils and pens and markers. You need these for drawing on um, your map, which I'll show you in a second. Players never have their own pencils. Ever. So I carry like 10 giveaway pencils just to give to people to keep, especially if they're at a con, they're gonna need a pencil. So I don't make people give it back. It's totally fine. Uh, here's the other thing, a little notebook. I always have a notebook of some kind. Uh, my favorite brand right now is a company called Baron Fig and they make these really nice either dot grid notebooks or blank notebooks that are hardback um, and they're kind of this A5 size. I'm gonna do another video where I talk about actually how I take and make notes for my sessions and how I set these little booklets up for each campaign. So uh, check that one out. That one should be coming out uh, after this one. Um, blank character sheets. I've been running a lot of Shadow Dark RPG because I'm developing that game. So if I don't play test it, who will? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but tons of blank character sheets are always good to have. I've got a little iPad with all of my books on it, um, downloaded straight to it. I can reference literally anything on this in seconds. So that is why I don't often carry around a lot of source books, but I do carry around a spare copy of the Quick Start Player's Guide for Shadow Dark because I like to give those out to people who are um, joining the game and wanna play it. So last item, last item, technically two items. The first thing is um, a foldable wipe mat. That was what that thing I took out first, the microfiber cloth was for. But see, I actually have some stuff left on here for my last game. You should probably wipe it after you play, but I'm not that self-disciplined, so. Ooh. You can draw on there um, and easily wipe it off. And I have found no more compact and easy tool to use for whipping up a quick map when you just need to come up with one off the top of your head. Um, it's so much easier to carry around than pieces of terrain. You don't have to fuss with it, and you kind of always keep the illusion of being prepared with your players, which I think is actually a really important thing to do because when you're improvising, I run very improv heavy games sometimes, um, you like to keep the illusion that the world is a continuous real place. So if suddenly you have this extremely set up 
battle map and then you're caught unawares when the characters take a left turn and you don't have something set up, it does kind of break the illusion. So I've always found that um, I personally, and I, I would hope my players still imagine the game world in their minds very well when we're describing it. And the map portion is really just kind of for the more tactical side of the game. It's not to visualize a space. That's my job to describe as a dungeon master. So that's where I draw the balance. Um, and then the very last thing here, the very last thing is I have all of these um, pre-made battle maps of, I, I believe they're by Wizards of the Coast. Um, I bought just like a pack of them. It came with 20 or so. Um, and they're like really nice, useful maps. You see, ooh, they're pretty big and they're double-sided. So they have different environments. Uh, a, lot, a really nice variety, this pack that I bought. I mean, it's got uh, sort of dungeon settings, underground magical dungeons, uh, more mundane, ordinary style dungeons. It's got some outdoor spaces, some town spaces. So um, Arctic, forest, lava, just a really nice variety. And I almost never find or have a need for a map that I can't kind of find amongst these. So there's just such a nice variety that like, if I'm like, oh, I really wanna run a an encounter that, I that we just thought of in a marketplace, there's kind of, there's something in here that will fit for that. So it's just really versatile. And I, I like having this to fall back on um, if you wanna whip up like a quick dungeon on the fly or you need to do something of that nature. Otherwise, you know, just drawing on this thing is really great and it's what I primarily do. You might have noticed I don't use a DM screen Generally not. Um, I roll in front of my players and I tend to not be able to see over a DM screen. If I do use one, it's a mini one that I made um, available on my website, but generally speaking, I don't even have one with me anymore because I just love to roll in front of my players and that way they know I'm not fudging and they, they're more scared than ever. So that's all, that's the whole story. So hey, if you have a minimalist DMs kit or you have some things you think I should add or check out, let me know in the comments. And if this helped you come up with your own kit, let me know that too. So thanks for watching and happy gaming. See you later.